Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're taking a look at what's new in Zim version Zim02. We're nearly there. We've um, taken a look at eight features so far, and now what we want to do is go to the Zim site at zimjs.com and take a look at um, all of the rest of the changes. Uh, these can be found through the docs here and then updates. We also, if you join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord, whenever we launch something new, we tell you to go directly into these updates and have a look here. So these are the Zim02 updates added about 30K. Uh, it's a fair bit of code. Um, it's more than Zim01 and Zim00, I think. That was just 5K, NFT was 4K, although this is NFT 01. So uh, we now have to scroll down to NFT 00. So this is going through the NFT updates to see that that was a 14K uh, addition. And then if we go to Zimcat, uh, Zimcat was 10K. That was Zimcat 4 though. And we would have to scroll down there, Zimcat 3 at 14K. Hmm, is this fun? <laughs> Zimcat 2 at 12k. Zimcat 1 at 31k. And Zimcat 0 at 64k. So Zimcat was quite a large addition. And it looks like we're roughly half that 30k. So Zim02, we did find a lot of things to add to Zim. And uh, sort of surprisingly, <laughs> we're supposed to be slowing down. And, and, and we will. Um, this was Zim02. Our plan is to go to Zim03 next, Zim04, etc. <clears throat> so we changed the front to add the carousel there. And that change will, will show Zim02 Zim features for a while. And then we'll use it to promote the Zim editor and some of the demos, the new demos that we'll be putting into the Zim editor as we go forward. There is the Zim editor. We talked about that in a bubbling. We talked about the theme in a bubbling. So now we're going through and we're just seeing some of the updates that we missed. One thing to note is we have new colors of gray. So if you take a look here, these now number all the way up, so 16 colors there. And going from black to white, we always had we, we already had these ones, so the new ones are the stars. So we were missing 888, 666, 444, and 222. And we've added those in with licorice, charcoal, granite, and pewter. <laughs> Did I spell that right? Did I say that right? Pewter. <laughs> All right. Uh, horizontal vertical. I think we mentioned that, but just um, it's a break anywhere we where we have something horizontal or something vertical. We've changed those to H's and V's. So padding horizontal is now padding H. Uh, shift vertical is now shift V. That matches spacing H, spacing V. <clears throat> we had to update the game module because that they um, called Zim with those things. So we just did a quick fix on the game module there. Nothing else new in the game module. The font. We now no longer need to do a font object. So do we have an example of a font object? No, darn. <laughs> okay, so for these formats of fonts, we'll detect the, the ending on it and assume that, ah, you're loading a font. So there we are loading Ruben OTF into assets. And if we had more than one font, it would just go in there with the assets like the others. That's been kind of expected or hoped for for a lot of people for a while. And we had inherited the font object from CreateJS, or thereabouts anyway, and now we've sort of bypassed that, I think, and we just use the font as Ruben. If the font has two words like that, you can either use the dancing script or you can keep the plus in there. We just adjusted that so the plus is okay. But there we are. Oh, uh, watch that. If we completed this, it would make a link and it was messing up somehow. But anyway, so we just stuck a space in the URL there. But this would be your URL for the Google font right there. 
and you can pass that in. And if you had more than one font, you could just pass in a Google font URL right there or more than one asset. And that would also work as well. But in that case, you use the name of it from the ending name. So that's great. Can't lazy load font set though, no lazy loading. Here's the Zim loop, and we talked about the Zim loop. There we are adding a an interval right to the end there after, well, not quite right to the end, after the reverse. So that means it's going to come before some other parameters. Do we have the other parameters listed? Hmm. I can't see it in here. It should be in here somewhere, though. <laughs> uh, with the total parameter no nope, that's not it object literal container my apologies oh there it is right there <laughs> right up the very top scanning through all this stuff so uh, before the step the min and the max so you can specify when you loop you can specify those other things as well most of the time I don't even know if you've noticed have you guys been using zim loop and just never even knew that you could change the step or the min and the max. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I would say 90, 98% of the time, 95% of the time we do a loop, we don't have to change anything. So we just loop 10 times and take the I. So there we go, constants. We've added next and previous constants. That's actually will happen in the loop. What this is about though, is applying an interval. <clears throat> in a loop, and we did a whole bubbling on that, so we won't go into it now, but there, uh, with that, you can use a next or a previous constant to return next. Actually, we're going to make it so it can return pre, but that isn't set yet. So interval next, the interval itself, to make that all work, we're actually uh, implementing an interval in behind the loop. We needed to have a next function on the interval to jump right to the next interval without um, waiting. We've made some improvements to book so that we can uh, handle the, the Zim tag, text area loader. Those are all overlays, HTML tag overlays. And we made the update in Zim pages so that when you swipe between pages, it automatically will handle that uh, HTML overlay. Well, we hadn't made that in book, so that had to be manually done. And now we've applied it to book as well. And we improved that process a little bit in there as well, or at least solved a glitch. So there we are with a bunch of tags uh, in, in pages. There we are making a book and all those will be handled as we swipe through or go directly there. We added a numpad. We did a bubbling on numpad. We added a carousel. We did a bubbling on carousel. We adjusted the pen. You can read through there. Just a, We went through the pen, but some of those nuances of defaults uh, may have happened quite quickly for you. You should have a read of this to make sure that you know what to expect from the motion controller and pen as you go. Here's connectors, and we did a bubbling on connectors. Great. The scrambler. We did improvements on the scrambler. Oh, my gosh. Oh. When you are dragging and your mouse goes outside of the frame or outside of the frame, outside of the stage and goes on to an iframe, then you lose. We, we no longer can access the, the mouse because the iframe is sort of protected that way. And then when you come back in, if you moused up when you were in the iframe, we wouldn't know that. So we made this thing called um, Mouse Plus that sort of deals with that. But we didn't, we, we forgot that the Mouse Plus doesn't actually have an event object that would tell you the touches. So that means multi-touch and touches were, were thrown off and we had to deal with that with the scrambler. So old scrambler stuff was still messing up at times in those situations. And it turned out there were a couple other glitches in there too, and we solved them with a day of solid cursing. <laughs> there you go. I was like, oh my God, we're, here we are trying to launch something new, and here we are fixing something old for a whole day. Blah. Anyway, but I think we finally locked that down, so that's good. Tabs, pad, and list, they now have down uh, colors. So the down background color, down uh, color, down down, roll down background color. No, that can't be it. No roll down background color. <laughs> roll down that window. Uh, no, it's either it's either up or normal. It's roll, it's down. And uh, is that it? 
I think so, yeah. Um, but then there's a fair fair number of other things kind of involved in there. Anyway, that adjusts the uh, parameter order. And by the way, when you click that and go to the docs, you'll you'll see up top of the docs, you've got a little feature link that lets you link to the docs for those three things. That's how this thing, or shall we go there and just see? So there's featured items, then I hit tab. That'll let me look at the tabs. I hit top, I hit pad. Well, uh, I can look at the pad. I hit top, I hit list. Now I can look at the list. So anytime you want uh, feature things, normally you guys might be used to just jumping directly. Like if we just did it with tabs, that's it. We would jump uh, directly there. So uh, anyway, no big deal. <clears throat> But those uh, will be a big deal because that breaks the parameter order. So you need to know that those are quite often used too. And that parameter order is fairly soon on. So have a look at, have a look at that. We just did that with button, basically. So when we did it with button, we hesitated and didn't know if tabs, pad, and list really needed it and then just decided that, that it did. Okay. The Zim Manager, we talked about that. We no longer need to add managers to layout, grid, guide, and pages. Mm, I need pages in there. Okay, shapes. We've added a V object property. So any of the Zim shapes, such as a circle, rectangle, triangle, etc., blob. There we are making a circle, but you see how we've passed in Zim V values. So that means that it will pick from that range for its radius, and it will pick from that array for the colors. Well, if you wanted to later change the color to yet another one of those, there was no way to actually do that. You would have to remake this pick object and you may not know what it was. So um, we've made this thing called a, Zim, a V object that stores this pick object for each of the parameters. So in other words, I, but then once you've got the pick object, if you're going to set the radius to something in there afterwards, so we've, we've made the circle and what we're doing is every second, we're changing the circle to a different value that picks from those. So therefore it's circle radius dot pick dot choose, or sorry, equals pick dot choose. We have to choose from the, the V object for the radius or the V object for the color. Or you could use Zik as well. We like Zik. Zik shorter. We use Zik in be behind. But then when we realized how powerful Pick was, we made a more generic name called Pick, <laughs> a Pick object, and to choose from any of these uh, Pick literals, we would use Pick dot choose right on the Pick class. That's how you choose that. Or as before, we went Zik. Okay, <clears throat> small change. All right, as uh, tip changed a little bit, we realized that we had an align for the tip, as in where you wanted to align the tip is a little pop-up that you can click or roll over and a tip, a tool tip will appear. The alignment of that was, uh, was interfering or conflicting with the alignment of the label itself. So we've changed the tip alignment or the alignment of the tip to tip align and tip V align, and we've left align and V align to match the label alignment. Okay, so that would be a break for Zim Duo if you were using the names of things. Loc, loc now can locate an array based on an array. So we've had it in the past. These last two have been fun. Well, that's the normal loc of an X and Y. Here is locating it at an object that has an X and Y property such as, uh, if we want, we could say loc circle. Um, so, okay, new circle dot loc mm, other circle <laughs> or other square <laughs> or whatever. And, and then since that other square has an X and Y, it would locate it at that X and Y. So that's always been done. But here we are now locating it at an array with two numbers. That just makes it easier sometimes if you're wanting to use arrays of points. The pane has been adjusted uh, in a couple different ways. First of all, we, we did an auto setting for the width and height parameters of the pane. So that's like the button. The button has an auto setting. Um, and then it will just take the size of whatever text you put in it. Or here with the pane, it'll take the size of the content. 
when we did that, we realized that there's no point really in having the width and height as the first two parameters, because this will be quite handy. I think most of the time you'll set a pane that just fits by default to the size of your text. So we've moved the X and Y parameters to after the background color and color. All right, that means that allows us to make a pane like that, that will just fit. The next parameter is the background color of the pane, followed by the, the text color, color, and then the width and the height. Uh, so that is a break, but it should be handy. There's some details here where we talk about, should we do that with the button? Could we just say button hello? Because currently we, uh, that you know, half the time I make a button, I put button hello and then realize, ah, I got the X and Y first and I have to put in null null or some X and Y. Well, um, it may be that in the future we do that, but we thought really hard and we thought several times about that as to whether or not we should, if the button is in auto, so button has auto, we could say auto, auto, comma, hello, and then that button would fit the word hello. We don't really want to promote that though. What that means is every button you make will be a slightly different color, probably, or a different size, probably. And I don't think that that's the best approach. I think the best approach would be to make your buttons the same size and choose labels that will fit within those buttons. And that will make a better looking, more consistent app. So we're just not wanting to encourage just random size buttons <laughs> at, at this time. So you still need to say auto, auto uh, before the, I suppose. Yeah, so basically the default for a button is not auto at the moment. You know, the default is still whatever is the default, 120 by 60 or something. So whereas in the, the, pa the pain up here, the pain, it's a little bit different. You only have one pain at a time. Nobody really notices how big the pain is. Why not make it fit the content? And that's much easier. Okay, so there we go. But the button, however, defaults to roll background color of the background color dot lighten two. So thanks, Marva, for that suggestion. It's a marvelous suggestion. We kind of considered doing that before. I just never got around to it. It was more complicated in the past, and then it became easier once we've added the Zim Lighten. <laughs> Lighten made that so easy to do, we should have thought of it at the time, sort of saying, oh, why don't we just automatically make it a slightly lighter color? The only time that that doesn't get applied um, is with white, I think. I think it slightly darkens color. Or uh, anyway, there's some slight swap there, but that's pretty good. So in other words, this will now have a background color of purple and a roll background color of purple dot lighten by default. If you just said a BG color of red, then it would be a, a red dot lighten by 0.2. You can still set that manually if you want. All right, here we have general updates. We've added a 2B black and white that stands for and some hex number. What that will do is it will turn a hex number into either black if black will look better against it or white if white will look better against it. We've got an invert color as well that inverts a color. We added this so that um, we could handle the Zim themes better. And this inverts uh, hex colors. So there's an example of that stuff. All right. Uh, we've got a few more to look through. Why don't we just go through it quickly? Or do you want to read it? I don't know. What do you say? How long have we been at this? 18 minutes? Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, that's nothing. If you want, you can stand up, go get a cookie, put this on pause, stand up, do a little stretch. I'm uh, making my arms go back and forth like that. Ah, looking far, looking close, looking far. All right, here we go. Adjusted the color picker to set current color on OK if change color with text box. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if my stretch helped. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, how we process this, by the way, is as we go and make changes, we keep a list of the changes. Those lists of the changes are what you might call point form or kind of a draft list in a text file. Then we bring it into here into an HTML file and we format it all. <laughs> sometimes like a big long list of general uh, changes we don't think too much about. And sometimes these changes are a little bit 
peculiar or nebulous to describe anyway, but I think we had a bug. So the color picker set current color on OK if the if change color with text. Ah, oh, OK, right. If we change the color with the text box. So in a color picker on the left, there's a little text box that tells you the the um, the color number. You can actually edit that. I don't know if you knew that, but you click on the color picker and change the color there. Well, that was not setting the current color. It was setting the, it was setting the color in the color picker, but it wasn't setting the current color property. And so we didn't realize that. Now, now it does. Added a read-only parameter to text input. That read-only parameter is uh, near the end, I believe. Um, there is a break because it's sort of part way. If we put the param new parameters right at the very end or just before the style parameter, we don't consider it a break. Nobody in the right mind should be going all the way through all the parameters passed into the styles to get to a style. You would use the Jim Duo technique to, to do that. But anyway, we don't consider that a break if we add it to the end. However, if the uh, parameters get added somewhere in, in there, we um, do put a break by there. Added a wiggle stop event to wiggle uh, when the max time is set. So now when, if you set a max time for wiggling, you'll have an event that will, um, that will fire on the wiggle. Adjusted input to the handle, oh, uh, text input now handles direction, start and end on the text input. It's always done on the label. Thanks Marva for that made ORD be constrained from zero to the num children minus one. We were getting errors on ORD. If you, the ORD sets the level of something in the container. And if you set it to under zero or above the number of children, then it uh, just, it gave you an error. It didn't do anything. And now we just say, uh, if you go minus 10, just set it to zero. If you go 3000, just set it to the, t the highest number. Uh, remove the parent dot top on Zimify for movie clips in Adobe Animate. Right, we had mis kind of misread how Adobe Animate was treating um, movie clips. Turns out that it was putting uh, a movie clip in a container, and then that was on a stage, which was also a movie clip, and so levels of things we weren't quite working as expected. And we used to have this parent.top to bring it up, but now we know what's going on. We have uh, settled all of that stuff. So there we go. May, and that's all in the Zim Shim. Made calculate and sound wave have a normalized true as a parameter default. So that means sound wave, this is very important if you're using sound wave, is going to work differently. Sound wave previously would give you some, like what it does is it takes the frequencies of sound and gives you an array of values. How high, how high are these? How much bass is there? Treble, amp, uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, those were big numbers, uh, 300, 200, 500. Now they are a number between zero and one and they all get kind of normalized and that is much easier to work with. We meant to turn that into default last version of Zim, but forgot, maybe even the Zim before that. But we noticed that in there and that has now been set to default. Okay, so that's the calculate that happens in the cal calculate method of the sound wave. We adjusted Zim style to call reg when setting reg X and reg Y uh, with left, center, right, all these things. So that now works when you're using reg X and reg Y in Zim style. Fix the text editor to not give an error when editing text area if no label is assigned. Yeah, so okay, little bug. Now can double click title bars on window panel emojis, color picker and list to collapse. Thanks Carl for that. Okay, so double click on window panel emoji and color picker and list the bars of them. That is if they're collapsible. Adjusted the emitter so pool items don't list, uh, don't load above new items when levels are set to top. That's right. So you can say with a particle emitter, do you want all the new particles to go at the bottom, mixed in or at the top? And uh, if they were pooling and redoing, then it, depending on your level setting, it may have not been what you wanted. That was a glitch. Added placeholder instant parameter to the end of text input that defaults to true. Ah, right. We realized, and I think we like better, when a text input, when you've got a, what's that called? The placeholder in there. 
In HTML, you actually have to start typing before the placeholder disappears. So you put your cursor in and it's the placeholder stays there and then you have to start typing. Well, I actually don't like that because as soon as I, I like seeing the placeholder there, that's great. But as soon as I click into it, I'm ready to start typing and I don't want to be sitting there seeing some other text on it. So we just made the placeholder go away as soon as you give that text field focus. If you don't like it that way, then you can check the, say, set the placeholder instant to false, but that's going to default to true. Fix style to work properly with move, M-O-V, as well as move, M-O-V, sorry. <laughs> I can't say move, M-O-V-E anymore. I'm just conditioned to spell it only M-O-V. Uh, so M-O-V is our short form, our, our short chainable method. Um, and some people, you know, get that, <laughs> understandably, <laughs> get it mixed up with move. And we thought we would give a style of move. I don't know if we should, but anyway, you can, in styles, you can use the full word move if you want. You know, okay, that's fine. Um, added Zim Duo to frame, make icon and made width. So when you make an icon or made width, you can now use Zim Duo. That will help you get to the background color box faster. <laughs> help me. And I do this, I don't know, once a day at least, it seems. And I always have to go look at the parameters. Now I can just do that and know which one will get clear. So there we go. Um, adjusted Zim Animate so that the callback function is called if animate equals false is set. This was always intended, uh, but we just missed it. So Zim Animate, this, this constant right here, if you set it to false, none of the animations go. And that's great. If, if you've got your animations set to from, then the, if the animations stop, they'll all be in the right place. So that's the idea. If you use from in your animate calls and use animate false, then when you start your app, none of the animations go, but your app is sitting there already. Like, hey, it's great for testing. So this is what you would use with testing so you can just get rid of your animations. Well, if the animations, which often happen, an animation will call something when it's done and it wasn't being called. So now anim animate will call those callbacks even if animate is false. And there is a parameter no animate call that you can set to false if, sorry for the double negative on that, but you can set that to false. It's at, tacked on at the end of animate. All right, and a little description there. Zim, for Zim line, the to and from now position the line at the display objects uh, or at a display object provided. Okay, so if you say, if you're making a line and you say to some object, it would then go to that object, but it wasn't handling coordinate spaces. So now it does. Um, so if the object were in another container with different um, X, Y position, or scale or what have you, it will now take into account that and it will go to that object no matter which container it's in. So uh, thank you very much for, for that. Let's see, who is that? That was uh, Andre um, who pointed that out. That's very nice. All right, adjusted hold to not trigger an error if holding the object or if the object that you're holding is removed from the stage. So if you're holding on to something and then it gets removed from the stage, that was triggering an error, but now it doesn't. Uh, adjusted Zim drag to handle redrag when a single press and press up on frame. <laughs> this is stuff left over from the scrambler. Yeah, when you Zim drag and single press is set and you pressed up on an iframe, with mouse plus, <laughs> it wouldn't redrag after that. It was like, oh my God, okay. So anyway, that was one of the, during that day of debugging the scrambler, uh, that fixed that little bug anyway, part of the scrambler debug, okay. Change default motion controller mouse move outside to true. We always thought it was outside and the doc said that it was by default set to true, but then we, Found out it wasn't set to true. So now that is set to true. Whenever you use the motion controller by default, now it's supposed to be that if your mouse moves outside the stage, it should still activate the motion controller, but you can set that to not. Fixed arrow to have proper background, roll background color, sorry, parameters in the arrow 
other than triangle. Yeah, so our, our roll background color was working for a triangle, but all the <laughs> other triangle shapes, uh, or sorry, other, all the other arrow shapes were um, the background, roll background color didn't, wasn't activating, so that was just a typo in there. I forgot to set something. Great. We're nearly done, folks. How was that? Uh, here's the Zim path. So we've now put a trace on the Zim path. Finally, it's something we can look at. <laughs> How sad is that? <laughs> okay. What, what URL do we put in there? Zim.js zimjs.com slash paths. I think that should be. I thought we adjusted that so it was both paths and path, but it looks like we have to update the update. So this is zimjs.com slash paths.html, I guess, rather than single path. <laughs> nope, that's not working either. What the heck happened to our paths? Okay, I don't know. We'll have to look into it. Um, looks like maybe it's half up uploaded or something dot html i just looked at that and it was good why don't we try do i have internet yeah i got internet okay um under the code section here under the libraries there's a link to paths it's a directory oh i've been noticing that's happening okay uh anyway sorry it's a directory so Sometimes it will figure that out anyway, and then all of a sudden our server, I think, stopped doing that. Look, trace. There we go. Check this out. So I can upload a picture. Mm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and then we can uh, move the picture around. So this is, this is us making the picture bigger or smaller. And then we press off. When we press off, we can now adjust these things <laughs> let's let's make dr abstract's head mm, how's that for a <laughs> i think we can make this a little bit smaller there there we go so now we have managed to trace a dr abstract's head okay so what does this do if i if i toggle that down the trace disappears and what happens if i exit delete the trace image cancel confirm Okay, so keep it open and you can trace on that. But if you're all done, we can confirm. And there is the shape of Dr. Abstract's head. Oh, you know, hey, shouldn't we put this in our menu here? Uh, by the way, if you make some cool shapes, let us know. And we can add it to this menu. I think I just added an ear. All right, so, uh, or add it over into this menu. All right, so it would be nice to see some, um, some more of those shapes in there. And you would get that shape by just looking at the code. Send that along to us on Discord or Slack, and we can uh, we can add that to our menu quite easily. But isn't that nice? Now we've got the trace fe feature there. All right, what am I looking for? Back over here into the updates. That was the Zim path. We've added a new break section, so those are all of the breaks compiled there and up at the top here. Right there is breaks when we get some when we get some patches we'll put patches here as well but right now there's breaks note that we've also added this nice box on things and things so there's patches all set made a, a change to zim 2.7 the only thing is is that then matches all of those horizontal vertical um, breaks that we had added to zim luckily all of the other modules no problem there they're all working zim tips we moved Zim tips, we move the update section or the changes section of Zim tips to the up near, near the top. And then we've been going through these various things still to come and updates. And if you think this has been a lot of work and want to help out, uh, make sure that we can promote Zim to the people. That's where our money goes into um, making sure that people know or as, as best we can then you're welcome to send us a donation. If you are if you don't have the means or you're a student for sure, do not worry about it at all. We're happy that you're here using Zim. Let others know about it as well. That's the idea. Um, but there is the Patreon account if you uh, do have a little bit of support for us. That would be amazing. Okay. Wow. Holy moly. We did it. 
this has been a the last well maybe not the last of the zim 02 update uh, bubblings because we have possibly another feature that we're still planning on launching also as i think you uh, if you've seen this bubbling already the zim editor bubbling huh. Okay, <laughs> so you said that going to the editor, but there's going to the editor. This is us talking about the editor here. It's just a little promo for the editor, uh, but we will be adding a whole bunch of stuff to the editor, the login, the login things, and the share lists uh, that are all going into the, the demos area here. Okay, so we'll keep up on that, but we might have a bubbling on that, but we also have another feature, uh, another class in Zim that we're planning on launching, so... Perhaps you'll see that too. I am Dr. Abstract. What's bubbling at Zim? We just went through all of the general updates that weren't the main feature updates. You're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. We would love to see you there. Cheers. All the best.